there are a lot of reproductive endocrine centers in the United States, but I wanted to talk about a few of the things that I think makes us unique. There was a woman from Israel, um, and she obviously needed fertility drugs because she didn't get her period at all. She had something you're probably all familiar with, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, that's a syndrome that you can easily fix, usually with fertility drugs. Sometimes the biggest problem with that one is can you make one egg without making a whole bunch, even if you use the tenets of trying to load those drugs, you sometimes can't just make one follicle. But they did a pretty good job. They did actually an excellent job. They did, I was impressed. They did a meticulous job on this patient. They, with fertility drugs, she started out with clomiphene. She then went on to these injectable FSH drugs. They come by different names. You've heard them. Brevel, Gonalef, Folistim, Menopure, Repronex. That's the drugs I'm talking about. Six years, they made her ovulate every month. They not only made sure that her follicles got mature and that the sperm lived in the mucus at the right time, but they added intrauterine insemination also. They also, as many centers don't do, they, they did a good job. They checked to make sure that the eggs released. A lot of centers are guilty of not looking for a condition called the luteinizing ruptured follicle syndrome, but they did check that. The egg did come out of the follicle. Just making a rise in your progesterone, getting your period two weeks later, it doesn't mean that you actually released your egg. And then they did another really great thing by supporting her with extra progesterone. But six years, the woman did not get pregnant. Now, I, I'm, one of the things I'm trying to tell you is we go, if you say, um, you see a lot of advertisements about come to our IVF center, we have the highest statistics. Um, but you know what's the best IVF to do? None. If you can get somebody pregnant without it, no matter how inexpensive you are, not paying that kind of price um, is the best thing. And this, but a, enough's enough. At a certain point, the woman should have done IVF because she wasn't getting pregnant. But a person in her family died and left her with a lot of money. Now she could go to any IVF center, but she doesn't travel very far. They've got very good IVF in Israel. But... Nevertheless, she felt that the best center to go to would be in the United States. She didn't come to us. Um, I, I'm not that type of a person. I wouldn't be uh, bragging about that if that was the case. Um, but she went to another center with a worldwide reputation, and they are really good. I'm, I'm not saying that she went to an inferior institution. She went to a very reputable, highly regarded center. They did two cycles of IVF. She did not get pregnant. Then she went for cycle number three and four. She had two IVF cycles there, obviously top-notch facility. She did not get pregnant. Then she went back to Israel to see a doctor highly regarded and considered one of the best in Israel. And I know we've had a lot of controversy recently about criticizing the doctor from California, the so-called Octomom's doctor who put in six embryos and wound up with eight. But the doctor in Israel put in 12 at a time, but she failed to get pregnant not just the first time she put in 12, but even the sixth time she put in 12. So here was a woman who had the audacity, if you will, not to conceive, despite having 92 embryos transferred, which if you do the right thing and only put two embryos in at a time, that would be the equivalent of 46 failed IVF cycles. But now she came to our center, which... I bring this up because it also tells you a little bit about our center. We didn't have the reputation as the best center in the United States. We don't have the highest pregnancy rates. Um, but we have the reputation of being the place to come because we can do things and figure things out that others can't. So, in fact, the, one of the reasons that our, our – I mean, we have good pregnancy rates. I'm not trying to uh, gloss over them. But when you look for comparisons on the Center for Disease Control – you might find that they're somewhat lower than some of the other places. Um, but the majority of our patients are people no one else wants. But that's who we take us. That's, that's what we see. Sometimes I think it was an unusual day because I saw a normal patient. Um, but nevertheless, um, you have to come up with an idea. You can't just say, L we're so good, let us try it. That would be ridiculous. What, what would be anything better about my center than the other places? But 
what I decided to do was to consider that we know that in some women, um, uh, and there's two groups of women that are susceptible to this. There's one group of women that have normal egg reserve. You've heard the term measuring your day three FSH levels. That group of women, we have evidence that about 15% of that group of women, the drugs you use to make all these multiple eggs creates an adverse effect in the uterus itself, in the endometrium where the embryo is implant, and can prevent the embryos from implanting. The other group of women with diminished egg reserve, the adverse, there's also an adverse effect to the drugs. I have evidence to show that, that it may have an adverse effect in 95% of those women, and the adverse effect there is actually on the embryo itself. And that's why people don't get pregnant with high FSH when they use these high-dose drug regimens and why some places won't see you. So by looking for another angle, um, and that is uh, what I did was I purposely froze all of her embryos. She, we froze 27 embryos, waited till the drugs were out of her system, and then transferred the frozen embryos back. 